everyone, this is Carpet Shark, and today I'll be doing a tutorial on how to make applique pot pans. We're going to need a variety of supplies to bake these. We're going to need the halves. I pre shaved the palms and the fingers to prepare for this, and they are so nice and fluffy. You're going to need your pot pad templates if you use them. You're going to need the fleece cut out. Um, each of these little finger pieces are the size of a finger. The bigger the better. I forgot to cut out the thumbs. You're going to need some scissors. You're going to need a slicker brush. You're going to need a marker. Uh, this is a dry erase, but any marker will do. And you're going to need your pins. You're also going to need some polyfill stuffing. The sewing machine is really important. You need to have a sewing machine that has a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. And you want a thread that's the same color as the fleece. First you're going to take the half and you're going to flip it and then you're going to put your paw pad template onto it. And you're going to take your marker and you're going to trace your template. Or freehand it, either works. I just prefer a template because I make a lot of these. You're going to also do the same for the fingers. And then you're going to flip the template for the opposite fingers. Or again, free handing works too. Ta da! Finished. Uh, pad. So now you're going to take your fleece. It doesn't really matter which side. I prefer the more shiny side and you're going to take it and put it on the fur side of your paw. And then you're going to take that, take a pin and you're going to pin it. I prefer to pin it from from the side I'm going to be sewing on so I can see and not break my machine but you can pin it on either side as long as it covers the pop pad that you drew and there you go you have your pop pad all ready to be sewn using a straight stitch you're going to basically just sew around the line that you drew on your paws Sometimes it's a little difficult uh, to get it in underneath and you want to make sure that the fleece is flat underneath because if you sew it fold it over then you're going to have to take all the seams out and redo it. You're going to want to leave a gap in the seam because otherwise you won't be able to get the stuffing in. Do the rest of the paw pads the exact same, just sewing a long line and leaving a gap. You're going to probably have to go extra slow on the thumb because it's tiny unless you make bigger thumbs than I do. And you just need to leave enough big enough gap to put the stuffing in.
Now you're going to take your polyfill stuffing and using the little hole that you left in the seam, you're going to stuff your pop pads, all the fingers and the thumbs. If you're worried about stuffing spilling out when you're getting ready to sew it shut, you can pin it the opening shut to make sure it stays inside. And now all your pop pads are stuffed and the opening is ready to be sewn shut. Next with the straight stitch you're going to be sewing all the little gaps that you left open and closed. And you'll do this for the palm and all the fingers. Next, you'll be taking your scissors and basically just cutting off all the excess fleece on your pop pads. You're going to want to cut it as close as you can to the stitch, the seam. Um, sometimes I'll take some the big scissors to cut off the major parts of the excess fleece and then take the little scissors to trim it down towards the, towards the seam. Uh, whatever works best for you, you just want to have as little left over as possible without the seams popping up.
And when you're done, your paw pad should actually look like paw pads. All cute and round. So first, you're going to change your settings on your sewing machine to zigzag stitch. And then you're going to change the length of your stitch to one. If you do zero, then you have to like push it through. And then you're going to change the width of your zigzag stitch to three. Now with the first side up, you're going to zigzag stitch all around that, that edge. Uh, try to make sure that one side of the needle is on the outside of the edge and the other side of the needle is on the inside of the edge. And you just go around your pot pads. Sometimes I go around twice to make sure it's extra covered. But you only really need to do it once if your machine settings are correct. And there you have it, applique pop pads. Um, you can take the slicker brush and get the fur out of the seams. Uh, sometimes I use a metal comb. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot from this and thanks for watching. Bye!